Hey, Coach G here, Mind, Body, Soul Shift, your life, health, and wellness coach. We are kicking off week two of the Five Pillars to Better Health Challenge. And the five pillars to better health are mindset slash habits, your eating habits, physical activity, sleeping habits, and your water intake. So today, I'm going to talk about the second part of the first pillar, which was mindset. Um, and want to show you how they both kind of work together. So we're going to put all the pieces together and become whole, mind, body, soul. So let's jump in. So first thing you need to understand is what are habits. And habits are something that you do on a regular basis. Just you, you do it without thinking about it. You just, you just do it every single day. Here's a habit that we all have, um, putting on your sock on the same foot. I'm almost willing to guarantee you that everybody who puts on a pair of socks or stockings or whatever on your feet, shoes, whatever, that if you pay attention, notice that you put your, you use the same exact foot every single time. Every time you go to put on your shoe or your sock, you put the sock or the shoe on the same exact foot every single day. You don't think about it. You just do it. That is a habit. Simple, right? Simple habit. You don't think about it, you just do it. That's a habit. We all have some habits that we like to improve um, that would be helpful, uh, especially if they're unhealthy habits. So what we wanna do is we wanna take the unhealthy habits and improve them to turn them into healthy habits so that we can improve our quality of life. So how do you create a healthy habit? I'm glad you asked. First thing you have to do is you have to be able to identify your habits. That's number one. Um, we, most of us don't pay attention to our habits. Let me give you an example. Um, and I don't know, I'm sure it's probably happened to somebody else. I'm almost sure that I'm not the only person on the planet that this has ever happened to. If you've ever moved from one location to another, let's say it's you know not in the same neighborhood, but you actually moved, changed locations. But when you move like a couple of days later, you just drive to where you used to live. I, I've done it before um, without even thinking about it. And then I get there, I'm like, hey, I don't live here anymore. So I, I know I'm not the only person that's ever experienced that, but that's how habits are. We don't think about it, we just do it. So the first thing we have to do is we have to be able to identify our habits. That's the first step if we want to change um, a habit. We have to be aware of what it is that we do on a regular basis, because if we're not aware of what we do on a regular basis, then we won't know what our habits are. So we have to look for patterns in our behavior and what triggers them, especially the unhealthy habits. If those are the ones that you want to change, if you have some unhealthy habits that you want to change, then the awareness of the habit um, is the first thing and identifying it and then being aware of it. The second thing you have to do is you have to make a plan. You have to make a plan that includes small, reasonable goals and be specific about it um, and take action toward moving toward that. It don't have to be anything big. It don't have to be anything like, uh, you know, I'm going to start walking 10 miles a day. Okay. First of all, if you never walk, walking 10, coming up with a plan that you're going to walk 10 miles a day is just kind of like, over the top. So um, I would say do something that start off with something small, reasonable goals and work toward that. Consider what you'll need to be successful. That is the other thing that you have to consider. You have to consider what you'll need to be successful in the plan that has to be a part of the plan. So let's say you want to change your eating habits because that's going to be our next subject is eating habits. So let's say you want to change your eating habits. Um, and there's something about your eating habits that you want to improve, okay? Uh, so we have to ask ourselves this question. How can I change the things around me to support my goals? See, when you're coming up with a plan, you have to have the full plan. You know, you just can't say, well, I'm going to walk 10 miles. Okay, well, what is it that you're going to do in order to be able to accomplish that goal? So since we're talking about eating, let's talk about that. So let's say you say to yourself, I want to add more fruits and vegetables to my diet. I want to eat more fruits and vegetables on a daily basis. 
well, what is it that you need around you to support that? So what you need around you is more fruits and vegetables. So when you go to the store, you can't be buying the Cheetos and the Ding Dongs and all that stuff. That's not going to help support where you're trying to go. That's not going to help you support your goal. So ask yourself, what is it that you need in order to support your goal? So you may have to stock up on healthy foods, remove all the foods that's temptations to you that is going to keep you from accomplishing that goal. Another thing that you could do is you can find a spot uh, to relax, uh, use that time to meditate, um, do some deep breathing exercises or some relaxation techniques. Um, that should be a part of the plan um, because, again, it's mindset. In order to change uh, and improve your habits, mindset plays a big part of that. So um, I would say find you a spot, take some time to relax, meditate, do some deep breathing exercises, some relaxation techniques so that you can stay on track. That's the third thing, staying on track. Identify the negative thoughts and turn them into realistic, positive ones. I always say when you have a whole lot of negativity going on your, in your head, I always like to say, stay out your head, it's a bad neighborhood, especially when you have a lot of negativity going on. And in order to get that negativity out, you have to take those thoughts and turn them around and put positive thoughts there, okay? Um, I also like to say, because um, sometimes we have, um, have you ever heard a song and it just stays in your head and you just hear that song all day? I think they call those earworms. Um, so, and you just keep playing the same thing over and over and over and over again in your head, especially if it's something negative. What you have to do is you have to take that and turn it into something positive and play that over and over and over again in your head. So here's the thing. Let's say you have a lot of negativity going on in your head for whatever, about whatever the situation is. And, um, you say you don't want to have those negative thoughts because your negative thoughts affect how you feel and how you feel affects how you behave. Remember all that with mindset? So see how it all works together? Um, so what you have to do is, um, I like to refer to it as, and I know that some of you all are baby boomers, which is around my age, 65, some are younger, but um, most of you all will may remember um, back in the day when, uh, before CDs, right after the 8-track movement, well, actually, before the 8-track movement, because we had the LPs and the 45s, then we had the 8-tracks, and then we had the CDs and all that stuff. But anyway, going back to the records, back in the day when we had 45s and LPs, we did everything we could to make sure that we did not scratch the record. Because once you scratch the record, it never plays the same again. So what I like to tell people is, if you scratch the record, which is those negative thoughts that keep replaying in your head, scratch the record. Because once you scratch the record, it's never going to play the same again. And for all you all that has ever had 45s or LPs, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It just kept skipping and kept skipping and kept skipping, but it would never continue to play the song. So that's what you have to do. You got to scratch the record so deep with the negative thoughts to the point where you don't have them anymore. That's a part of being able to um, practice. You have to practice that because it just doesn't happen. So you have to practice scratching the record so that you don't keep replaying those negative thoughts in your head. So once you've identified the negative thoughts, then what you have to do is you have to turn them into realistic, pro productive ones. That's what you have to do. So the other thing that you have to do is you have to think about the future. Now, you can learn to postpone immediate gratification because most of us, we want the, the immediate gratification. I mean, that's just human nature. It, it's just who we are as people. Um, but the, the uh, immediate gratification, as far as your future is concerned, may not necessarily be what's best for you. So think about your future and imagine the future in a positive way and the experiences that you will have and the rewards that you will receive from not having the immediate gratification. Like, um, let's say you're working on your eating habits. Um, and you want to change them. 
you want to have better eating habits. Well, the instant gratification is, well, I'll take products and that's going to help me to get where I want to be. That's going to help me lose the weight. Or I can take a pill and it's going to help lower my blood pressure. That's, that's immediate gratification, which it really doesn't work anyway. So um, let's say that you uh, find something that is going to help you have positive in, images of your future so that you can experience that. And that all goes back to your mindset and your thinking. Because your thinking affects how you feel. It also affects your behavior. See how it all works together? I'm telling you, it all works together. So if you, if you look at that, it's a great way to strengthen your ability to make decisions that are better for you in the long run. So the immediate gratification, no, don't, don't, don't go for that. Don't even set yourself up for that. Know that your future, it's a, it's a, it's a long race. It's, it's a long race. It's a journey. It, it's nothing that, that you can do overnight. It takes time. It takes practice. And you have to be able to implement these things in order to be able to reach that goal, which is the next thing. Be patient. You're never too old or too out of shape or too overweight uh, or on too much medication that you can't make healthy life changes. You're not. And I don't care if you've been on medication for 10 years. I don't care if you've been eating bad for 20 years. I don't care if you've been overweight for 60 years. Um, I don't care if you've been out of shape and haven't done anything for the last 20 years. It doesn't matter. You're never too old, too overweight, too out of shape to be able to make healthy changes. You're not. And that's what the key is. You have to understand that. Try different strategies until you find what works for you. See, what works for one may not work for everybody. Um, I remember this one lady I was working with, and um, I used to go to the gym with her, and um, she was an older lady, a little bit older than me. And, um, you know, she really wanted to get off some medication, and that was why she wanted to start going to the gym, changing her eating habits. Well, we were going to the gym, and she was working, and I saw her, I saw that she was struggling. She was really struggling with working out. So I just said, you know what, well, maybe this is not for you, you know, and just because, you know, I go to the gym all the time doesn't mean that that's for everybody. So I said, let's find something that's going to work for you because you want to accomplish your goal. So we have to find what's going to be best for you. So we explored a couple of different uh, things to see what would work for her. And actually what ended up working for her was water aerobics. She fell in love with water aerobics. Um, was able to um, manage her numbers, um, be able to get off certain medications. Um, she ended up losing some weight. And if I'm not mistaken, I think she was like 67 at the time, somewhere in there. Um, but she was able to change the negative habits and be able to uh, replace them with positive ones. Now, she had to have a plan. Then she had to execute the plan. But again, you're never too old, too uh, too old, too out of, out of shape, too too overweight, too, on too much medication to to be able to change your lifestyle. Everybody has to find their sweet spot. You have to find your sweet spot because that's what's going to work for you. And if it works for you, that's where you're going to get your results. So, if it's not going to the gym, if it's not water aerobics, then try walking or try some calisthenics, which is you know moderate, low impact, um, try some aerobics. There's different things that you can try, but you have to be able to turn that habit into, that bad habit into something good. So again, that may not be for you. So things that, that and things may not always go as planned. And that's okay, because you know why? It's a process. That's why you have to be patient. You try it and you say, okay, well, I've done this for 30 days. It's not quite working for me. Let me try something different. It's a process. It, and, and you have to be patient in that process, because this is a journey. Staying, getting well and staying well is a journey. It's not, it's not an overnight thing. When I was 237 pounds, I did not lose 117 pounds overnight. Number one, I didn't gain it overnight. Did I want to lose it overnight? Absolutely. Did it happen like that? Nope. Took me about a year and four months to lose 117 pounds. Could I have done it quicker? Absolutely. But my plan was is that I wanted to lose it 
and never for it to never come back. So that's why I took my time. And honestly, um, I, you know, I've been struggling um, probably for like the last five years to gain 10 pounds, you know? Um, so uh, what I did was I came up with the plan, I executed the plan and it worked for me. But again, even to get where I am, I still have to be patient. I still had to know that, you know what, in order for me to, to get the muscle tone, in order for me to get to where I really want to be, I have to be patient with myself. Uh, that's the most important thing to keep, to, to keep it moving forward. Because if you, if I didn't, if I wasn't patient with myself and I would just said, well, this ain't working, I would still be 237 pounds, if not more. So what I had to do was I had to make a plan for the unhealthy things that I was doing. And I had to replace them with the positive things that were going to help me to get to where I really wanted to be, which meant that I had to be intentionally consistent, intentionally every single day, because once I was aware of my habits and I knew the habits that I had to change, I had to intentionally be consistent with making those changes. That means that I had to practice it every day. It didn't come natural. Because the things that we do by habit, those are natural things. We just do it, like putting on your sock on the same foot every single morning. If we pay attention to our habits, then we'll know what it is that we really want to change. Because once we examine those and we can say, you know what? Hey, I've been doing this for 20 years, but you know what? I think I need to do something different. Because once we make those changes and we cultivate that, then we can accomplish um, the growth that we're looking for in that area as far as our habits. Here's the thing that is really important. This is vital. You don't decide your future. You decide your habits and your habits decide your future. That's what decides your future. So when you think about your habits, when you think about what it is that you're doing on a daily basis, and I want you to really take the time this week, and that's the challenge, take the time this week and look at the patterns that you do every day from the time that you get up in the morning. Just be aware of what it is that you're doing every morning, whether it's you're getting up, you know, having a, a, a bottle of water, whether you get up and have your coffee, um, whether you get up and stretch whether you get up and do calisthenics, whatever it is that you do this week for the next seven days, I want you to pay attention to what it is that you're doing. That's a habit without you even having to think about it, that you just do it naturally, that you just do it because you just do it. Um, I want you to pay attention to those things this week. And while you're paying attention to those things, every single thing that you do, whether it's uh, your eating or lack of exercise or exercise, whatever it is, I want you to pay attention to your habits this week. Because when you examine what it is that you do on a daily basis, that, that awareness is going to let you know what it is and where it is that you need to change. Because again, you don't decide your future, you decide your habits, and your habits decide your future. So if you uh, overeat every day, that's a habit that you have of overeating. What you're doing is you're deciding your future. That's what you're doing. You are deciding your future by what you're doing with your habits. That's why it's important that we, that we take a look and examine our habits. So that way we can create better habits because it's up to us to create the habits. So for the next seven days, I want you to pay attention to everything you do without thinking about it. When you like first thing, start with putting on your sock or your shoe in the morning and see, don't you put it on the same foot every single day. Just, just pay attention. I promise you, if you pay attention, you'll start to see things you'll be like, wow, I do that every day without even thinking about it. There's some things that you do on a regular that you may want to change. Um, but the first thing is you have to be aware. Because if you're not aware, then you can't change it. Then once you're aware of it, then you can put forth the effort into making it happen. So make goals that are doable. Take baby steps if you have to. It's okay. You don't have to keep up with everybody. Like I think there was a, a song or a movie or something trying to keep up with the Joneses or something like that. Don't, 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 no, this is your race. This is your race. And only you can run your race. Nobody else can run it for you. So don't be looking around what everybody else is doing. Take baby steps. It's okay. I always say you can only eat an elephant one bite at a time. One. That's it. So 
if you have to go slow or take baby steps, it's okay. Here's the key. Stay intentional and consistent. Those two things are the two things that's going to help you to change your habit. Being intentionally consistent. Being intentionally aware of what it is that you do on a daily basis. That's how you improve your habit is to pay attention intentionally and be consistent with whatever the changes that you're making. Hey, that's what I got for you this week. And just want to let you know, uh, next week is Thanksgiving. I will not be dropping a video on next week. It will be the week after that, which would be the 30th of November. So um, I hope that this will help you to examine your habits, what it is that you do on a daily basis, what changes you want to make, and, um, and, and go for it, you know? So uh, I will see you on the 30th of November. I hope everyone has a happy and thank, thank, happy and safe Thanksgiving. This is Coach G, uh, Mind, Body, Soul Shift, Your Life, Health, and Wellness Coach. And I will see you on the 30th at the same time, same place. I'm out. Have a good one, everybody.